You're listening to the Play Like a Girl podcast, episode number three. You play ball like a girl! I'm Nikki B with Play Like a Girl, made just for female athletes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Play Like a Girl podcast. I'm your host, Nikki B. Here at Play Like a Girl, we aim to encourage more confidence in young women who play sports and give them the necessary tools and advice to have an amazing career in sports and beyond. If you are a young woman who plays sports and lives an active lifestyle, or you know one of these young women, I am so excited you are here. Each week, we will either bring you a guest in the sports world or have a roundtable discussion of the many taboo and important topics in the world of female sports. Are you with me? Let's change the game. Today, we have an amazing guest, Sarah Lintakis from So Craftastic on YouTube. She has almost 2 million subscribers. Yes, you heard me right, 2 million. She is a DIY arts and crafts guru who played sports in high school. We talked about how she balanced sports, school, art, and more, how she made the tough decision to choose art over sports in college, and her advice for handling social media in today's cyber world. Please give a warm welcome to our first guest, Sarah Lynn Takis. Well, hi, Sarah. Thank you so much for being our first guest on Play Like a Girl. I'm so excited to have you here. Hi, Nikki B. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to do this interview. Yes. So many of our listeners probably know Sarah as the DIY guru from So Craftastic on YouTube. But Sarah, tell us who you were as a high school and college student and your sports background, because I think a lot of listeners don't realize that you have actually a pretty um, incredible sports background. Yeah, so I went to high school at a really small private high school. It was Cardinal Stritch in Oregon, Ohio. Really small town. Not many people in my class. I graduated with 68 my senior year. Oh, wow. Um, I stayed really busy, really, really busy throughout my four years there. I started student council right away, and I was really into art. So art was my favorite class. I did that a lot in my free time. And I also, of course, did sports there. I was on the soccer team and the track team all four years. And I was a captain of the soccer team my senior year. So that kept me busy. And I did other activities as well, such as Link Crew, which is where juniors and seniors kind of help the incoming freshmen and do activities like icebreakers. Um, So I think that's pretty much everything. It's been a while. I graduated in 08, so... I think that's pretty much everything I did. Um, College, I went to the University of Toledo. I decided to just live at home and commute there. And I did actually decide to end my sports career going into college, even though I was thinking to go for soccer and or track. Um, I thought that it would be a lot of a, a big commitment, too big of a commitment to keep up with my art career. So I did decide to just go and do art full time. And I decided to kind of just be active on the side, go rollerblading. And um, I did a, um, the, the summer after my senior year, I did a, I was on a soccer team. It was just for maybe like a month. And that kind of ended my craving for being on a team, even though I still missed it afterwards. <laughs> I would see the people practicing at my college and I'm like, oh my gosh, I missed that. Maybe I should go try out for something, but I don't know. It's just something that had to be done in order to have enough time to keep up my grades and also have a social life and balance my life that way. Right. Okay. I'm so happy you brought that up because I think you're being a little bit modest. So what you guys, what we talked about in our previous conversation, so you graduated high school with a 4.2 GPA. You also were like one of the star athletes on your track team and your soccer team as well. I know you said, I believe your freshman year, you um, were like one of the top um, athletes on your team, on the track team. Um, So tell us, how did you balance that 
the school, sports, social life, student council, and art. You did so much in high school. And I want to know from you, like, how did you balance all of those things? And actually, and you were actually good at all of those things. <laughs> I was okay at soccer. Um, so I didn't really develop my soccer skills, skills well until probably junior, senior year. But I always liked to run when I was younger. I always was pretty fast. And um, I actually, I forgot to mention, I tried out for basketball freshman year because I had played that in middle school and I didn't make the team. I mm -hmm. was the fastest on the team, but I wasn't aggressive. I was a pretty <laughs> shy kid, so I didn't make that team. I decided to go out for soccer since one of my friends from grade school was also doing that sport as well. So um, after soccer, um, a lot of my teammates my, a lot of my teammates were telling me that track is a great way to stay in condition for soccer throughout, you know, the spring. So, you, so I didn't have that much of a gap of doing nothing. Um, I went out for the track team and I kind of just, um, I was kind of basically <laughs> jogging, kind of going fast in practice, but I was nervous because there were so many older, older girls there. And I, I, um, I, didn't want to beat them at the races right away. Um, I was kind of nervous, like, what they would think of me or if they would um, be my friend after that. So eventually I gave it my all, and I was beating them at practices. Not everyone, but a lot of them. And they decided to try me out in different races. I was starting out with just the 100s, 200s, 4x1 and 4x2. And that short of a sprint wasn't really my forte. I was doing okay at it, but I really excelled in the mid distance, the 400 and the four by four. So I did become a part of the four by four team my freshman year, and we ended up going to the state state. We ended up going to the state track meet in Columbus, Ohio, and we did qualify. Um, we qualified, but we didn't. We didn't. Um, what am I trying to say? Um, well, you didn't, you did, did you guys not, you didn't place there. You just qualified we, to go to the next. So we placed the first day and then we didn't advance to nationals. Right, right. And but did, you made the four by four team at your freshman yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was very exciting. And it was a great way to bond with my team after that. We mm -hmm. stayed in hotels. We went to the mall. We went out to restaurants in addition to practicing and getting to race together, and that was really exciting. I never expected to ever make it that far. Yeah, well, I think that's absolutely amazing. And what made you, I know we talked about this a little bit beforehand, but what made you so determined to, one, take on all of these activities, so like school, sports, art, social life, student council, and then what made you so determined to be good at all of them? Like what what was your drive or what was that fire inside you um, to really work hard and excel at these things? I basically pushed myself. I was telling you already that my parents, they really liked that I was pushing myself and they they were very proud of me that I was getting good grades, but I never got in trouble if I didn't get a good grade on a test mm -hmm. <laughs> or if I totally bombed something. I wouldn't get grounded or anything like that. I was my main driving force, but also having inspiration from actresses on TV shows and just people who were achieving their dreams celebrity-wise or seeing my family, my parents push themselves to work harder to take care of me that pushed me to do my best. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And so I know we talked about like you were great and you did school, sports, social life, student council, art in high school, but you mentioned earlier in our conversation that you ended up not playing sports in college. So talk about, because I'm sure that was a tough decision, right? Um, talk about how you made that tough decision to focus on school and art instead of sports. Um, because I know a lot of athletes face like kind of an identity crisis when they decide to leave their sport, whether it's after high school or after college. Um, because, you know, that's something that they've identified themselves with for quite some time and then to just leave it right away. Um, how did you make that decision? And then how did you kind of transition into just focusing on school and art? Okay, so 
I knew that I had to keep my grades up in college. I was going to get some sort of scholarship for sports, but I don't think it was going to be a full ride. And I knew that I would be getting more help for my grades and grants and stuff like that. So I knew that I had to keep that up. And in high school, um, it was a big commitment, but I knew college would be even more of a commitment Mm -hmm. with sports. Um, There might have been two practices every day, for all I know. Um, but I just didn't think that I'd be able to fully commit myself to a team and give them my all as well as keeping my grades up and trying to progress in my art career and further my skills there. Um, plus, you know, they always say pick two out of three in college, keep your grades up, um, a social life and sleep. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) the social life and sleep to think about. And I just decided it would be a better idea to not go all out and commit to a team. Uh, It was really tough, though, because there's such a family aspect of being on a team. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was going to miss that. Something that did make it easier is I had a few friends go to the same college as me. So I already knew people going in, and it made it a little bit easier. I still missed it a lot, but I think that helped. Mm -hmm. And you said, too, that didn't you um, join, like, a rec league when you were in college as well? I did did soccer right before Mm -hmm. college, so it was the summer between senior year and freshman year of uh, college. Mm -hmm. Um, I did actually, I did um, did some sort of little basketball team one year as well. That was like an intramural? Yeah. (laughs) I did that, and um, I think that was it, though. Mm -hmm. otherwise I just like I said stayed active went to the park and Mm -hmm. rollerbladed biked right I think that's um a great point though because I think it's hard to be able when you get to college to try and do all the things so definitely you know making that tough decision and focusing on one and I like how you said like you didn't you wanted to focus on your studies and you you didn't want to let your teammates down and I like how you brought up that point about you know you have your school you have your social life and your sleep and you really can only pick one more other thing that you really (laughs) focus in on so whether it's you know a sport or art or like other some other sort of club um, I definitely think that it's important for girls to make that decision and be okay with that decision. Cause like you said, you still played intramurals. Like there's still ways to be, you know, whether you don't do sports, but still be active or say you don't do art or something like that, but still like paint on the sides or so, you know, something like that. So I really like how you decided to do that. Um, and speaking of your art, I want to know how you started your YouTube channel. So take us through your like art career from maybe college and on. How did you like get your success that you have today on YouTube? All right. It was really by accident, honestly. I had been doing art my entire life and mm-hmm. I've always been into coloring and crafting and making things. But while I was going to college, I already had started my YouTube channel, I think the last year of high school. And I was just making silly videos with my friends. And once I started college and I didn't see those friends as often, I decided to focus more on my life and just what I would do in my free time, which there wasn't a lot of at that point. (laughs) But I would still try to make things, create things out of candy wrappers. And I'd also draw and do other crafts and art. So, basically, I was doing those videos on the side, and I wasn't expecting it to become a career. I wanted art to be my career, but I did not know that YouTube was a possibility. So, I finally got accepted. Back then, you had to be accepted into the partner program. Um, They kind of would just... Google, or YouTube, there was no, they weren't owned by Google then. So, YouTube would contact creators once they had enough views... And so, um, so I was contacted by them to monetize a few of my videos. They would accept a video, they would accept on a video by video basis. So they'd have to kind of look at every single thing I was posting as opposed to um, just accepting my entire channel at mm-hmm. once. Um, so after that, a couple years went by and I started in 2010 my so craftastic YouTube channel. I had just a random one before then. And 
I was able to start getting a paycheck every month. It was very little. I was still living at home, but I was really excited because I was halfway through college at that point. And I'm like, wow, so I already do have a little bit of income because I wasn't quite sure um, what career I would have right away in art because a lot of people do freelance work and that's kind of something that I was leaning toward. And I know that that's not always a stable career right away. So I didn't know how long I'd have to live at home, but YouTube started picking up and I was really excited about that. I was able to do what I loved in all aspects of life, which was really amazing. And I'm super blessed that that happened. That's so cool. I love how you took one of your passions and turned it into your career. And I love how you said it kind of happened by accident because you were just enjoying what you do, like what you love. And, you know, it ended up turning into a career. So that's, that's just absolutely amazing. Um, For your success today, what qualities do you think sports instilled in you that made you such a successful entrepreneur and YouTuber today? I think the team aspect, like I mentioned, I'm so in a sports, on a sports team, you have to, of course, look inside yourself and push yourself, but you're also wanting to do better for everyone else that is counting on you to pull your weight and contribute and and um, develop your skills. So for my career for YouTube, I feel like I'm doing it for me, but I'm also doing it for the people that I'm inspiring. Maybe on accident, but I am inspiring (laughs) so many people and it makes me really happy to hear that and that motivates me to keep pushing myself to move forward. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, you have almost 2 million subscribers on YouTube. So I yeah. would say you're inspiring quite a lot of people for sure. That's amazing. Um, and so I know you talked about how YouTube was kind of like, it wasn't even owned by Google yet when you first started. Um, so for us, when we were younger, we didn't have to deal with social media growing up, luckily. <laughs> but yeah. unfortunately, teens and young adults today do. And I think it's a big topic of discussion. I mean, you hear all over media and on every news report, I feel like something's been said about social media at some point. Um, So what would be your biggest advice to teens and young adults today for staying grounded, ignoring the haters and bullies online? Like what's your biggest advice um, for them? Especially because I think a lot of them want to be YouTubers or want to be influencers. So what's your biggest advice for teens and young adults today? I would say the most important thing is to always stay true to yourself. Your happiness is way more important than someone trying to bring you down for what you enjoy. So that's something I had to really keep in mind over the years because I did have a lot of people who didn't really understand why I was so into art. And that is one of the reasons that I accidentally got into YouTube. It was to try and find other people who shared that interest in my life and not just Mm -hmm. sports and not just talking about movies and TV shows and whatever boys, (laughs) you know, all the dating, all the dating stuff. So it's nice to, you know, have that balance in your life where social media is fun to post photos on and talk to your friends on, but you don't want it to control who you are and let it get to you or let it get you down. Mm -hmm, Definitely. I think that's such an amazing point because it's so hard for other people's opinions to have an effect on us, right? And I think definitely taking a step back and realizing that there are other people that share the same interests as you. Of course, you know very well that you have over 2 million subscribers on YouTube, so there's definitely other people interested in art. So the couple people that say bad things can just go away because (laughs) obviously they don't know what they're talking about. (laughs) Um, so it's not talking about sports, but I want to know from you, cause you do so many DIY crafts and projects, so many different things. What's your favorite project or your favorite thing to do? Because you do so many, like you totally inspire me. I'm not crafty whatsoever, but I've been watching some of your videos. I'm like, I need to start doing this because maybe she can teach me a thing or two. <laughs> yeah. My favorite relaxing thing to do, since I moved to my new house, um, and it's summer now, in Ohio it gets really cold, for those of you who don't know, 
but I just like to draw. I started a new sketchbook, and I've been drawing with different things. I'm trying to draw with crayons, which I've done before, but I tried to make realistic drawings. So I'm just testing new art supplies, and that's probably one of my favorite things to do. But crafting-wise, I've been really into making room decor. So that is, and you can even go to the dollar store and make projects that look like they're a lot more. Like that. Like you bought so, them in a store. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Like you just like you bought them at Target instead of Dollar Tree. Right. But, That's amazing. Yeah. The, well, cool. Well, um, the last thing I want to know from you is what advice would you give to your younger self, whether it's about sports or art or school or just life in general? What's the best advice you would give to your younger self? I would say not to hold back any aspect of who I was. I was really shy, as I mentioned, and it, took, it, it still does kind of take me a lot, a lot of time to open up to people, but back then it was, I think, even harder for me. So even though over those four years I did form in high school, I formed pretty good relationships with my teammates, and we would have sleepovers, and, and we would talk outside of sports as well, which I think is really important for anyone watching, if you're on a team, make sure that you form friendships with these people and don't judge them if you don't have the same interests in everything. Try and find common ground. And that's something that I wish that I would have done a better job of is to really keep an open mind and get to know everyone on a more in-depth level, not just take them for oh, this is my sports teammate, like, we have soccer in common, I don't know if we'll ever be able to go to the mall together, because mm -hmm. you can make that happen. Mm -hmm. I love that. Be true to yourself, and know that there is common ground between you and everyone else. That is so <laughs> great. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. I loved chatting with you, and I think you had some great advice for our listeners, and um, is there anything you want to plug or tell them to follow you on? I'm sure I'm sure some of our listeners are already following on YouTube, but give us all your social handles or tell us where they can find you. All right. I am active on Twitter, at Sarah Lynn T, and Instagram, which is also at Sarah Lynn T. Um, in my free time, I like to do photo shoots and go outside and take photos of flowers and nature, so... Um, if you guys are into that, I have a lot of that on my Instagram. Awesome. And then her YouTube, of course, as we've mentioned before, is so craftastic. And once yes. again, thank you so much, Sarah. I appreciate you being here. And you are definitely someone who plays like a girl. So thank you so much for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> awesome. All right. That was so good, guys. Oh, you guys, I loved my conversation with Sarah. She shared some great tips and advice on just everything in life, from sports to art to school to everything in between. She's such a successful YouTuber, and I think she's such an inspiration. I loved the, the advice she shared about staying true to yourself and not to mention you can find common ground with anyone. I absolutely loved that advice that she gave to us. Make sure you are following her on YouTube. Subscribe to her channel, So Craftastic. She has taught me so many cool things just by watching her videos. Make sure you share this episode with a friend who you think will enjoy this podcast. I'd love to hear your feedback and thoughts on this episode, so head to iTunes to leave us a review. You can also send any questions or topics you'd like us to cover by sending us a DM on Instagram at playlikeagirlmp. We want to know what you want to hear. Before you go, screenshot this episode and tag us at playlikeagirlmp so we know you're listening alongside us. Thank you so much for listening to episode three of Play Like a Girl. We hope you come back for more. Once again, I'm Nikki B, and remember to never stop playing like a girl. You play ball like oh, a girl! Oh,